Foul tarnished. Someone must extinguish thy flame. I command thee. I am the Lord of all that is golden. Queen of Caria, Renala of the Full Moon. Graceless tarnished. Thy kind are all of a piece. By the flame of ambition. Together we will devour the very God. The one who walks alongside flame shall one day meet the road of destined death. Pointless tarnish. I covered destined death. To kill what? Tarnished warrior. Spurned by the grace of gold. Be assured the Elden Ring resteth close at hand. Me and Elden Ring have had a bit of a rough history. A history rough enough that I used to call myself a self-proclaimed Elden Ring hater. Well, as much as a hater that you can be when only a month after streaming the ending of my first playthrough, I streamed beating the game again. <laughs> after that second playthrough, I didn't touch the game for a long while until I did a fairly smooth going third playthrough that was stuck at the fire giant for a week. Eventually I did beat him, but in realizing that the next boss was the Godskin duo, I never returned to that playthrough even still to this day. And at most had two fling runs that had almost gone nowhere and will most likely stay that way. Only a year later after beating Sekiro and before embarking on my final Souls game, that being Dark Souls 3, would I return to Elden Ring to tie up some loose ends. I never fought Moog because I had no idea where to go, so I searched it up, streamed fighting him, and he's now actually one of my favorite boss fights ever in the entire series. That is still worth it! Yes! Yes! Woo! <laughs> I also thought that since I beat the game, I somehow missed the Placid Juice Axe train, but I was wrong. And I ended up streaming that pretty cool fight too. That, uh, whenever they do lightning, ooh! Wow, that was really easy. Whenever they do, uh, lightning, whenever he uses the lightning thing, he, like, catches it from the sky as it falls. That's so cool. And something that had always nagged me in the back of my head was that I first beat Melania with an OP online friend. 
Yes! Yes, Craig. <laughs> yes, Craig. Yes! Still took two and a half hours to be here, by the way. <laughs> so, this time I thought I'd stream myself beating her by myself, at least with the Mimic tier. And well... I have a feeling I'm gonna have to do this without Mimic. Either way, I have to learn her moves, and there's a bunch of people on this planet that are like, oh, she's the easiest boss ever, she's by far not the hardest, Ishin is harder. I beat Ishin in four tries. Ishin is not fucking hard. Come on, y'all. Yes! Kill the bitch! Yes! She's done! I don't ever have to do this ever again! <laughs> I don't give a fuck if I used a mimic. I did it. Also in two and a half hours. <laughs> At this point, I thought I'd never touch the game again until the DLC came out. But then, on February 21st of 2024, the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC trailer came out, and I was hyped. But before we continue, let me give you guys a brief history on my entire Souls journey, as I believe it will provide much needed context as to how I went from a self-proclaimed Elden Ring hater, to having it be one of my favorite video games of all time. I want you to cast your mind back to the month before Elden Ring came out. I don't know the time because I was out of the loop and just thought it was some lame fantasy RPG game everybody was hyped for. And then I found out it was one of them hard, unforgiven Souls games. <laughs> the most experience I've had at that time with the Soulsborne series was watching my brother quit out of Bloodborne because of this wolf and this wolf. And they were both too terrifying. Oh, and it was a Soulsborne game when we thought it'd be more akin to Devil May Cry. There was also a time where my oldest brother's best friend at the time- Oh my god, that's a- I'm gonna just move on from that one, y'all can pause on that one. <laughs> he let him borrow Dark Souls 3 so that we could get into the series. We all took turns fighting Gundyr and beat him after 2 hours. We stopped playing the game after not being able to beat what came after. Figuring out that we had to put the coiled sword down. However, now is when the rabbit hole begins. I remembered that I saw a trailer for the PS5 remake of Demon Souls. It was a PS5 game that actually looked and felt like, you know, a PS5 game, and I love Knights Vanquishing Demons, I mean, like, who doesn't? There was only two problems after that. Sure, it was the first Souls game, but it was still a Souls game, and one that cost $70 at that. I did end up remembering, however, that the PlayStation Plus membership lets you download Bloodborne for free, and so I thought, if I can get through the first level of Bloodborne, then surely I can beat Demon Souls. Even then, I was still intimidated on even trying Bloodborne though, so... And hear me out, because it's gonna come out of fucking left field out of nowhere. <laughs> In preparation for Elden Ring, Jacksepticeye started playing through all of Bloodborne. I'm really hoping I'm saying his name right, I, I always fuck it up, I don't know why. <laughs> my girlfriend likes his videos, and these videos would end up being my gateway drug, essentially. After watching the full playthrough, I thought what I saw was too cool to pass up, and then after playing it, it very quickly became my favorite game of all time, bar none. I was ready to experience the rest of the Soulsborne games. Now, after some time, Elden Ring released, and everybody and their mom was talking about it, you know? <laughs> Eventually, Jacksepticeye did a series on it, which both me and my girlfriend vaguely watched all of it due to the video's like, long run times. Um, long story short, I saw some things that I thought were really fucking cool, and other things that I simply did not care for. However, there was one boss that I saw, aside from Malekith, Malekith, my beloved, oh my god, <laughs> that made me want to instantly buy the game. Hardest boss in the whole series, and apparently, one of the hardest bosses of all time. Heed my words. I am Melania. Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. 
To me, beating Millennia was the goal in Elden Ring. It would be like finally beating Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts 2, except on cocaine. My first playthrough of Elden Ring was like a roller coaster. The highs that I really liked, I was absolutely in love with. Malik is my beloved. But the lows were just so... And fire dying down. Come on, fireballs, leave me alone, the fight's over. And that's where I'll leave Elden Ring for right now, actually. Next, I streamed Demon Souls, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, it's real gimmicky, but the experience and ambience of it all is undoubtedly epic. I then streamed my fourth playthrough of Bloodborne, just being in love with it as I usually am. Well, obsessed is a better word. <laughs> then came the Dark Souls 1 playthrough that ultimately, I didn't love. But enjoyed the more linear open-ended world design, though it ultimately doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because you're taking shortcuts to places that don't matter anyways. However, the painted world and the DLC completely saved the game for me. Manus. Let me say it one more time. My beloved. We don't talk about Dark Souls 2. Except for the DLCs. They made some badassery out of a bad game in the DLCs. Oh and that's the most I'll give it, to be honest. <laughs> Yes! This guy's a god! Oh, whoa! That was cool as fuck. Oh, we're done. He's alive! This guy's a champ! Holy shit! That soldier's an absolute god! Sekiro is definitely one of the most rewarding video games I've ever played, and I have never been so happy to have my ass kicked. It's addicting, but for some reason, I can't bring myself to go back and play it unless there's stakes higher than Ishin. I am very content with the time that I have had with Sekiro. I then ended up tying up some loose ends in Elden Ring, got hit by a drone, and then streamed the second coming of Cry- I mean Dark Souls- Dark Souls 3 lives rent free in my head. Medir? My beloved! The base game's incredible, and the DLC? Chef's kiss. From then on, I moved on to other games, replayed Bloodborne or Dark Souls 3 again, and the one thing you can take away from all of my streams was I always ended up trashing on Elden Ring's open world design, and a couple of its bosses. Some views I'm completely flipped on today, and other views that I still agree with, but don't hold as harshly as I did before. And well, now we've caught up to when the Shadow of the Earth Tree trailer has come out. That DLC trailer had me bricked up. I mean bricked up. I mean bricked up. Bricked up. <laughs> Brick. That trailer had me dumb hyped for Elden Ring. Because as far as DLC track records go, they've knocked it out of the park every time. So now should be no different. Knocking on wood. Hopefully. <laughs> and so I decided, let me give Elden Ring's base game one last really fair shot. After all, if I don't love a dungeon like Stormvale, that must have meant that I explored all of it, right? Right? So, my journey on becoming a lightning knight in Elden Ring began. Now originally, I had written down my journey throughout all the major regions of the game and finding the things I've come to appreciate about it, but in revising the script, it kinda hit me. I'd just be describing how everybody already plays the game. <laughs> I was finally taking my time with it, and I explored every nook and cranny at my own pace and generally just took the game a lot more slowly. I was so used to the condensed experience of a game like Bloodborne that I've always tried playing Elden Ring in a similar manner. Don't get me wrong. 
I explored what I wanted to and I took my time, but this time I slowed down even more and got to really know the lands between. I was having a lot of fun, but I still didn't have that magical FromSoft moment where it all just sort of clicks. I was having a lot more fun with the bosses, the, the regions, the dungeons, Langdell especially so, going from being so bored with it originally to being absolutely fascinated by it now. But it all finally clicked with me when I got to I should preface this segment by saying two things. I always thought Rykard was lame, barring the voice acting, and I've actually never done the Volcano Manor. Like, I've done the three assassination missions and fought Rykard, but I originally never knew there was a, a, a whole dungeon. All that I eventually got to know about Volcano Manor is that there is in fact a dungeon a metal bridge that rises out of the lava, and a godskin noble. Aside from that, I knew nothing. So in this playthrough, I decided to put in the effort to find and explore it all. Zarias, I think that's her name, oh my god, is a literal snake and must be protected at all costs. I learned that the god-devouring serpent was just there even before Rikard from this lady. Hey, shitty Mike here. Quick little editor's note, um, I was gonna get footage of all my NPCs and they're just gone. They're just gone! Where the fuck are they? I was loving the level design of the village, though I questioned why there were so many bodies and cages everywhere. Hmm, I killed the godskin noble. And at this altar is when my brain started having its cogs turning. Were the people on Volcano Manor just always worshipping this godlike snake? Welp. Up and around the corner I went and these snake statues made everything all make sense. And finally made my head click with the game and made me understand how incredible everything was in this game. The snake people were, were just people trying to become one or the same with the serpent of the volcano. Some having successes and some failing spectacularly. But let me just let past me speak for himself. After once went through Volcano Manor. I fucking love it. <laughs> really upset at myself at the fact that I didn't do it. I never went through the dungeon of Volcano Man. I like did the quest where you're supposed to like assassinate three people and then you fight Rikard. Like it teleports you to Rikard. But I never went through like the entire manor itself. It was so cool. Because I couldn't find a way out. But then I did, and I was like, at that point I just want to fight Rykard, dude. Like, I already don't kind of like Rykard, but going through the manor made me ri like Rykard. It's just, <laughs> I understand it now, and it's really fucking cool. Like, the demigodness of it is Rykard. Because he's the crazy bastard who became one with the, like, god-eating serpent. But he's also fucking crazy. That's why they're trying to kill him. But, like, going through the mansion... First of all, it doesn't even start off like a mansion. It starts off like a prison town, like some Resident Evil age shit, but like with hung bodies and fire everywhere. I'm like, okay, this is cool. And then it starts becoming like a village that's burnt down with the lava that's like spewing through the volcano. And then it's the actual volcano manor slash castle stuff. And you just see like statues of serpents and shit like that, just like looking like deep into the lava and stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, okay. And then you start seeing all these cool people like that are turned into snakes and then some of them are like not turning into snakes and it's not working for them so when you kill them their head explodes and poison i'm like oh okay oh, okay i understand the demigodness in this now and it's fucking awesome <laughs> i really like this this is so cool you're right why wouldn't i explore a place called volcano man i just didn't think you'd be that sick <laughs> it's so cool Volcano oh, Manor goes hard. I just didn't know it went this hard. I didn't know he would build a bright card this much. Like, through just the manor itself, just the visual storytelling. I'm like, oh. I understand. It's not just some motherfucker who was, like, crazy enough to become one with the serpent. It's like, oh, like, he is worshipped on this shit. Like, this whole entire thing is about merging with the serpent. And it's like... He is the demigod because he merged with the god eating serpent. I'm like, okay. And even when you kill the serpent, he pulls up. So it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> he became this snake that they fucking worshipped. There we go. 
and now I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, this makes this feel so cool, dude. Like, this is giving me some, like, really evil Hercules vibes. <laughs> I'm just realizing this whole room is also like a fucking block. No, I guess it's something for What the fuck? The whole room is made for him and they're like bringing down the prisoners of like people trying to turn the snow. Oh, this is so cool actually. Oh my god, and that's all the people. Oh my god. <laughs> like as I noticed in his stage. There's like chandelier, but there's also a bunch of like prison cells of like the people that were like literally thrown down in cells so like they can try to like feed him in a safe distance it's so great he's like his almost over it's uh time to fucking die die fucking boy Oh my god. I <laughs> Yo, yeah, buddy. Oh my god. That was actually so fucking cool. I'm upset at myself. What's wrong? <laughs> After such an incredible experience, the entire game changed for me. I went really head ass and gave my guy a coat so he wouldn't be cold in the snowy mountains while fighting Nial. Nial? Commander Nile? Commander Nile. Or shitty ass fire giant. I finally explored all that Farron Mazula had to offer me, planned two separate other playthroughs, I love Malekith so much dude, killed Elden Beast, and killed Moog to prepare my Lightning Knight to face the DLC. I put the game down for a week? but then started my other playthrough as a Dragon Slayer with dual-wielded greatswords. I had finally, not only understood, but fell in love with Elden Ring. But there was still one thing in the back of my head that had been nagging me. It was finally time that I single-handedly, with no summons, gimmicks, or mimics, would set off to take down the ultimate challenge. The one that kicked off this entire Soulsborne journey of mine, and I mentally prepared myself to be here for hours. <laughs> but after 30 minutes and only 11 deaths under my belt, I would finally have the fight I always wanted against Melania.
I'm sorry. I finally met my match. I finally fucking did it. Let's go. And well, that's pretty much it. I can't wait for the Shower of the Urchery DLC to come out, so much so that I have three characters waiting at Moog's and my Dragon Slayer is halfway there. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I sure had fun making it, and if you want to spread the love for Elden Ring, please make sure to leave a like, leave a comment about your favorite memory with Elden Ring so far has been, and if you want to see me lose sleep streaming Elden Ring's DLC, then subscribe so you're there on day one. Aside from that, thank you for watching and have a good day y'all.